super excited about our guest this afternoon. Yes, have some is partnering up with the Ghostbusters containment unit, our good friends, Tom Henry, Matt Sanders, to welcome our very special guest today for the first time on YHS, Ernie Hudson. Ernie, how are you doing today? You know, I'm great. It's, um, yeah, no, it's, it's really a good time. I'm feeling good and uh, really happy to be with you guys. Well, thank you so much. So, um, I guess we should start off here where, you know, I'm in Atlanta and then, uh, Tom and, and, uh, and Matt are in California and Florida. Right. I'm in Santa Clarita, California, which is, um, uh, an unusual place, but, uh, I'm working out here. So, um, yeah. So California, uh, out in the way out in the, the desert, it feels like anyway. Cool. Cool. So yeah, you, you were mentioning before we got started that you're, uh, you're kind of getting back into the swing of things and, and work is, is ramping back up. So I guess a good place to start is how, how has your 2020 been? Because I, I know it has to be a little bit different than, uh, than you were expecting going into the new year. Yeah, this is kind of a new, whatever it's, hopefully it's not a normal, hopefully we'll get back to some kind of normal, but I have a feeling we'll never get back to the good old days. Uh, but, um, but I, you know, work is, is interesting. I do two shows. Um, I do a show called family business on BT plus, and, uh, we're shooting now. We had shut down for the pandemic. I just started work. Yes. Well, yeah, Monday. Sorry. I'm a little turned around. <laughs> and, um, we just got back into production, a lot of protocol, a lot of it's, it's weird. And then, uh, I do a show called LA's finest that just, uh, premiered on Fox and it's on spectrum. Uh, and we're trying to figure out how we can kind of get back. So it's, it's, um, everybody's trying to figure this thing out. Right. That was one thing I was going to mention. So LA's finest had its uh, broadcast premiere this week. And, you know, a lot of people have had such a negative impact with, with COVID and the changing of schedules, but it's actually kind of interesting that because of the lack of new programming on Fox, uh, you know, this show that's already in season two on Spectrum is now going to have this whole new audience on, on broadcast right. TV. So you kind of had a, a, a backhanded uh, positive to, to come out of everything. Right. Yeah, no, it's uh, and it's great. Hopefully uh, it'll do well on Fox. It certainly opens it up to a wider audience. Uh, I think it's a great show. Um, but I will say season two is it's 100 uh, percent better than the first season, which you know sometimes it takes a show a minute to kind of find its place. Uh, not that the first season is bad, but this second season is really incredible. So hopefully um, it'll do well and, um, you know, it'll be around for a while. Cool. That's great. Well, congratulations on that. That's, uh, you know, the year you've won, we've, we've all, you know, we're longtime fans, we're longtime Ghostbusters fans. And, and the one thing you've always been adamant at, about as, as an actor is you got to get out there and you got to work and you, you got to do the work. And uh, uh, you, nobody works harder than, than Ernie Hudson. I'll, I'll as a Ghostbusters fan, we we know that we know that in our hearts. So uh, it's really cool that uh, well, thank you. that you got uh, you know this opportunity to uh, you know be out there two shows. Not not a lot of actors have two shows you know on TV at the same time. So that's great. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it's it's a blessing, and I'm very very thankful. Cool, truly cool. Yeah. So yeah, so this year, so Ernie, you 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 do a lot of conventions, you do a lot of signings, you, you've kind of become the de facto ambassador of the Ghostbusters franchise. You, you've always been so connected with the fans. Um, because of everything going on this year, that you haven't been able to you know, be out there as much. And obviously, uh, this year, we were supposed to get Ghostbusters Afterlife, and it's now pushed back. Uh, right. So now you have this opportunity. You can do some signings. You can work with guys like Matt and Tom and, and really still connect with the fans in a more virtual atmosphere. So have you, have you been able to participate in any of these like virtual cons and maybe you could talk a little bit about what, what that's been like. Well, it's certainly different. I did, uh, I think one, uh, with, uh, Derek Maki and his, um, cool waters. Um, uh, he had put something together. Um, it's very hard with the, um, you know, with this format because, uh, it's not like, you know, going to a convention, being there in person, being able to connect with people one on one. So I think everybody's trying to figure out how this thing is going to work. And if people are willing to, you know, come aboard and, you know, and sit through looking at a screen. So um, it's, it's a little different. Everybody's trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out how 
Uh, in all honesty, I'd gotten to a point uh, just before this uh, where I was a little burnt out. I didn't want to get on a plane. I just wanted time at home. I got my wish, not quite <laughs> what I had in mind, but uh, so yeah, I've been home for a while, so it's it's good. I was curious, Ernie, along the lines with conventions, and you know we're autograph collectors and stuff like that too. Has there ever been an item that's come across that you just thought was awkward, or what is one of the like most random things you've ever had to sign or been asked to sign? Um, you know, I'm usually pretty. Um, pretty uh open in terms of whatever uh, the things that may not make sense to me but if if a fan is coming or save this thing i know it's important to him so um but i've signed a little bit of you know everything i, I guess probably um i'm just trying to um I'm, I'm trying to think of something that really kind of you know uh, actually it's more the signing uh, on the person. And then there's been a number of cases where they've taken that signature and got it, uh, uh, yeah, what, uh, a tattoo. So to tattoo the name on your body, that uh, seems a little bit <laughs> above and beyond. But uh, like I said, I respect, um, I respect it. And, um, but yeah, no, people will say, you know, just you know all kinds of stuff but uh, i try not to as i get older i try not to judge and uh, you know i try to appreciate if it's important to you hey it's uh, i can respect that that's cool absolutely yeah i mean it's got to be weird seeing your face tattooed on somebody like because i know there's a huge collection of ghostbusters fans who've got you know winston zedmore tattoos so that i'm sure the first time you know you got to be a little bit taken yeah back by that yeah, the first time I was at a auto dealership, I was um, uh, buying a car, and um, the salesman said, "Hey, we, uh, our mechanic is a big fan. He has, you know, a tattoo of you." And I'm like, "Really?" So he calls a guy in, and and he's a guy who's probably fifty or so, uh, not the kind of guy who you think would be a, you know, a fan but uh, i realized in ghostbusters there's no type of fan <laughs> exactly and uh and he pulled up his leg and uh his whole calf was my face and uh <laughs> and i was uh, i was so uh in awe impressed um uh, and yet it was kind of and i didn't know how to react because i didn't want to embarrass him you know i didn't want it to go what the hell is that but uh, you know you just so that's the hardest thing sometimes is how do you respond to something that kind of catches you off guard? Um, so, you know, I just, whenever I took the car back, I made sure he's a guy who uh, serviced it, you know, so. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Listeners of our, our show know that we have a story where when we were out in LA for the premiere for the 2016 Ghostbusters movie, we were walking through a hotel and, and uh, our other co-host who's not with us now, Jake, he's got a tattoo of Bill Murray. Uh, on on his arm and somebody goes hey is that Bill Murray on your arm and we turn around and it was Annie Potts and she's like taking a picture of it so uh, yeah you just never know uh, lots of lots of tattoos but that's great the question is did you finagle some sort of discount on the car since the mechanic was such a big fan maybe you get a little uh, you know something off the top end yeah no I don't get discounts uh, <laughs> all that for that right 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 no yeah no people and I'm not a good negotiator so <laughs> That's okay. I think everybody should be paid for what they do, and there you go. It's all good. Good, good. There you go. So, Ernie, I, I wanted to circle back to the convention question. Um, so, you, you mentioned you wanted a break because you do a lot of conventions. You're all over the place. Uh, how, what do you see, kind of going forward? Like, is there a path forward for conventions in a post-COVID era? What do you see yourself doing? You know, I don't know what the post-COVID era is going to look like because. Uh, nobody's been really clear about what we're dealing with. I mean, there's been so many mixed messages from it's not real to it's the most, you know, catastrophic thing we've ever faced. Um, there's been no really clear treatment for it. Um, and so I think everybody's a little bit not sure, you know, this distancing is just bizarre. Uh, the mask, I don't know how you, normally at conventions, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to hugging people and picking up the babies and have them drool all over me. And, <laughs> um, and so all that's out. And I just don't know how we, um, uh, 
I don't know how we do it. I'm sure we'll figure a way out, but um, it's uh, I I can't even imagine. I have no idea. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think that's the big unknown everybody's dealing with. And now you know you're talking about being back on set. You kind of mentioned some of the protocols. Is it is it adding um, a lot more time to the day? I mean, I know days on set are already you know really long and stretched right. out. Well, yeah, you know we uh, we have to be. I had to be tested three times before I was allowed to come into the bubble. We call the bubble. Um, they um, have a number of houses where the cast and crew are put up in. Um, it's a really nice house that I'm in, thankfully. Um, but um, uh, when we go on the set, we're, um, oh, and we're tested three times a week while we're shooting. Uh, we go on the set, we're sprayed down um, uh, each time, a couple, two or three times a day. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's crazy. Everybody, uh, has to wear masks until, unless we're shooting. So they're really going out of their way. I think, uh, the fear is if they start a production and there's problems, everything's going to shut down again. So they're really, I can't go to the store or, I mean, I'm literally in this house until I go to the set. Now I'm only going to be here for a couple of weeks, but the crew is going to be here for several months. I, we're all trying to figure out, like for us, uh, I, I work at a church. How does, what does that look like? How do we make sure everyone's safe? Right. Uh, and for what you do, you go down, it, 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 it causes quite the stir for sure. Yeah. I mean the scenes, um, you know, the schedule, if someone, you know, has a problem, then, uh, you know, it's just, it's really, and we're kind of constantly sort of rewriting and readjusting and moving things around and, um, so yeah, it's, it's just, um, just a very different time uh, and how that, uh, will affect. It. I, I also notice that uh, being, um, when I've gone out to a store or, uh, to places, uh, the usual, Hey, Ernie, can I take a photo? Uh, that's a little awkward because you can't do that. Uh, nobody's willing to hold anybody else's phone or camera to take a picture um so that yeah it's it's a different time it is and i feel like um as things begin to open because here in orlando a lot's open disney's back open universal is open and right um, and it's it's retraining yourself how to be a person again and be kind to people again because we're so distrusting right now you even sneeze wrong we're freaking out yeah no that's uh that's true i think at some point we probably will have to just um you know, open up um, if there's hopefully a vaccine. But if no, what I'd hope for is that we'd have a, just a good treatment. So if you got this, you know what to do. Right now, it's not even clear what you do other than stay home and and cross your fingers and right. hope it's going to be okay. I mean, that's about it. You know, go to the hospital if it's extreme. But so I'd hope that they'd say, okay, you know, we have a treatment. And then I think most people would say, okay, I'll take my chances. As long as I know if I get it, I got a good chance of not having anything severe. But uh, because there's been so much confusion, we can't even point to just a, like with a common cold. We know, okay, there's steps you do, take vitamin C, you know, get some rest, whatever that is, you know how to deal with it. This is just, just totally confusing. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you kind of mentioned the misinformation and the the distrust and the and just it really is like that. You just stay at home and, and hope for the best, uh, yeah. which is uh, not not great medical advice <laughs> across the board. No. Um, no, and it's also unclear when they say, "Well, don't um, you know gather you know more than a few people," and yet you see these big gatherings, right? And, right. and sometimes they say um, several came out of it, and sometimes you don't hear about anything coming out of it. And so then you begin to say, well, if they all got together and it was no problem, then what? So it's it's just very unclear. I think in five or ten years, we'll look back and we'll be like, oh, we didn't know anything. <laughs> it was either well, it, much worse or way less than, than anybody knew. So That's true. Yeah. In five or ten years, I'll be a hundred if I'm lucky. <laughs> so, you know, it won't matter to me, so... Um, Ernie, we got, we know you probably can't talk much about it, but we got, we got to talk a little bit about the, the new Ghostbusters project. Obviously it was supposed to come out in July. Uh, now March, hopefully we'll, we'll make it. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So you have been asked about a third Ghostbusters movie probably more than any human being in the world, uh, including, you know, Ivan Reitman and Dan Aykroyd, uh, because you're out there talking to the fans all the time. Um, right. So when the announcement first happened and, and you, you got the script, um, was, was it kind of one of those like, I can't believe this is actually happening moments or did it take to getting on set till you believed it? Well, it was, I think, um, it was even before I got the script uh, and I got a call from Ivan Reitman um, and Jason, you know, we talked and then I know, okay, this is really going to happen uh, because, you know, like you said, there's been so many announcements and so many things that fell apart until I just got, um, but even after it wasn't until I got the script and read the script that I thought, okay, this is not only is it happening, but this is really good. And, uh, and it's really in line with what the fans have been hoping for um and it's really ties into the first two movies um you know i like the the movie with the the ladies but it was kind of a different you know different take on it right so um so that's when i once we got the uh, i got the script and um and yeah I, that i began to get excited about it and felt like i knew something definite but up, up until then um it was still if maybe and you know whatever right right yeah and i i think it's interesting i mean you know ghostbusters is so associated uh you know as a new york movie obviously you, you guys shot up in calgary uh from from the little we've seen it looks more of a a rural setting so um I'm trying to dance around it so you don't you know no no one's getting in trouble today not on our watch uh, uh, yeah 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 but but yeah. I don't know. Just you know, being on set for the first for the first time, it, it had to be uh, like one of those moments where you you never really thought it was going to happen, and now it's happening. And I guess the anticipation of you know knowing what the fans are, you know, that first right. thing you see where you go, oh, they're going to like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like I said, I read the script, and um, and you know, for a long time, and in fact, they never officially said it was okay for me to mention, it, but I think the fans know that. Obviously, you know, we're we're back in the movie so um but how much involvement and you know what the new cast and all that i, I wasn't sure but um but after um just coming together it was a, you know for me honestly it was kind of like um a, a spiritual get together i mean um yeah you know a, a movie that has had so much impact and meaning in my life uh, to go back into that was just, uh, it, it was, it was emotional to me. Um, you know, to see Danny Aykroyd and Bill and uh, it, yeah, it was very, very special. And it's a great new cast. I mean, people, um, that I didn't uh, know before, but, um, I just, um, you know, seeing people work and seeing their ability and knowing that they're all bringing their best to it. Um, and I, and I think bringing what it deserved, you know, not something that sort of was thrown together just for the studio to make some more money, but, uh, really, um, Jason's, uh, just love of it and commitment to it. Um, yeah, I was, I was very touched by it. Um, to jump on that real quick, I, this is something that I've wanted to ask you or anybody who worked on the first movies you work with different directors all the time. You've worked with Ivan Reitman. I, I, is it three times total? Um, do you see similarities in a direction style from, from him and Jason, or is it, is it a completely uh, different approach or uh, maybe somewhere in the middle? Uh, yeah, no, I think it's a very, uh, because, you know, a, a director directing is very personal. You know, I mean, there's certain, um, you know, mechanics, um, you know, that you need to bring to, uh, you know, the set, you know, but, um, it really is, a what you bring as an individual, you know, how you relate to people, how you relate to the material, um, how you get people to do what you hopefully want them to do, how you command the set and, uh, all the production and, and Jason is just, just a very different person than Ivan. You know, Ivan had his way of getting things done, but Jason is, um, 
I, I'm going to say this, and uh, not that I'm implying that the other one isn't, but Jason is one of those guys that you want to show up with your best because you really like him a lot. I really like Jason. Uh, knowing him as a kid, you know, when we did the other movies and uh, seeing how he's developed as a director on his own, um, yeah, I, you know, you just respond to him in a different way. It's a, yeah, and he's, and he's good at what he does. Yeah. So, That's but great. very different than his dad. Um, yeah, but they're very different people. Yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. You know, Ernie, as a fan, hearing you say things like spiritual and emotional regarding this movie makes me so excited to see it. Um, and, and when it was announced, it was a little, a little bittersweet. Um, you know, you've, you've spent a lot of time talking about Harold Ramis and how yeah. he was able to mediate and, and ground things on the set. And, and I just wanted to know what it was like to revisit this story and these characters after so many years, knowing that he couldn't be a part of it. Was it bittersweet for you? Yeah, yeah, it was. You know, Harold was, um, yeah, he was kind of like the glue that I felt. I mean, Ivan is a director, producer, you know, um, and juggling a lot of things. Um, you know, Ivan is one of those people who, you know, expect you to do what you should do. And it's, you know, we're doing this and we're going to have fun, but you know, it's not a lot of pampering or any of that sort of thing. And Harold was the one, um, when things were moving a little, you know, in a weird direction, this kind of pulled it all together and pulled everybody all together. You know, he was always the one that uh, you totally trusted. So to be there and not have him there, um, yeah, because his, his presence is so much a part of all of it. I mean, you know, his, um, his input, you know, just uh, his stamp of, of, of all these characters, um, he was really, uh, really, really missed. And um, yeah, it was, it was very difficult uh, yeah. uh, not having him there. And, uh, but you know, that's obviously we all have to make our transition and you hope you have a great life. Harold had an amazing life. So, you know, it, it's not that, but it's, it's just, I would have loved for him to have, uh, been a part of that and and seeing it sort of reach a place where we're actually moving forward with the franchise mm -hmm. and that, i know that's something he always wanted to do right yeah. yeah thank you for that that was that was very uh uh very well said i mean obviously anybody who talks about harold ramus it has nothing but uh just he was the kindest funniest uh you know smartest yeah. pers smartest person in the room no matter what so, yeah um Ernie, one thing before we kind of get towards the end here and wrap up, I got to ask you, we've got this uh, Hasbro Pulse Cons coming up this weekend, and you're taking part in that. After almost 40 years, can you believe that you're still selling Ghostbusters toys and like and, and you're 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 the you're the spokesman because uh I know I'm gonna be buying it. Look at look at I am a, I'm a grown adult and what you're seeing is uh my house. So uh uh no shame yeah. here. But uh that that's cool that you're uh, participating in that. Yeah, you know I um I mean you know they asked me to and um like I said I believe in the franchise. I'm probably the last guy because <laughs> when I you know when we started the movie, I mean Winston was sort of you know, he was kind of the guy who sort of slipped in the back door. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think the fans turn out to be so extraordinary and, and have just for years and years and years, I mean, over 30 years, I mean. Um, and so, yeah, it's more for them, I think, than, uh, you know, the toys are great. And, um, you know, to have something kind of in my image, um, that's all well and good, but I'm really, um, uh, yeah, I see little kids who were like babies and then they come back, you know, 10 years later and they're in their teens. And, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, whatever I can do. Um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 um, yes, yeah, it's just great to be a part of it. Good. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we love to everybody like, when when the announcements come and and we see that that uh that you're going to be taking part. We we know it's going to be good and it's going to be fun. And I, I think, like I said earlier, you're you're you've been an ambassador and like you've really worked really closely with a lot of the franchises. I'm part of the Georgia Ghostbusters. We've had you All at right. Dragon Con, and that's where you really start seeing the difference. Uh, you know, 
uh, I think it was 2013, 2014, you were at the front of the parade uh, for Dragon <laughs> Con in the streets of Atlanta. Yeah. So uh, yeah. hopefully we can get back to something like that. Uh, because these, That would be great. These virtual you know, and I got to say, that, was, that parade is one of the best. I mean, I do a, I've done a lot of parades in the past, but uh, Dragon Con, that parade, and, and I don't know how many cars we had and how many Ghostbusters, man, it was it was really uh just incredible yeah i think that year there was over 100 ghostbusters and seven ectos of, of yeah. va- various cars so uh a good showing for the for the ghostbusters community here in atlanta yeah and you know for me i think probably um when i came into the the, the movie um i was at a different place in my career than uh, bill murray or, or danny or harold um and so for me, I've always sort of looked at it in a very different way. I mean, it wasn't, it's a movie, but it's also kind of a part of me in a, in a, in a strange way. Um, I mean, I've done a lot of movies and I've, I've, I've worked um, consistently over the last 50 years. But, um, but yeah, I feel like um, sort of the need to want to uh, participate and to kind of give back. Um, and I know a lot of times, uh, a lot of people I've worked with, they don't feel like I did the movie and that's that. And, you know, it's, uh, you kind of move on and, and certainly you move on, but I also know that in strange way, I'm connected in this movie along with all the fans who are also connected. Um, and that's very, very special. Yep. And, and you're phenomenal at it. You really are. Just the fact that you'd go to great lengths to bring your flight suit with you to conventions for photos and all the stuff you do on cameo you're so accessible and you're so great to humor us and 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 carry that torch well it goes both ways i mean it really does and um it's fun for me and but the fact that people appreciate it um that it means a lot and um yeah it it definitely goes both ways absolutely well Tom, I'm going to give you the floor now to talk a little bit about the signing uh, and kind of let people know, you know what's going to be happening and how they're going to be able to get uh, uh, some really cool Ernie Hudson signed uh, memorabilia, 8x10s, all, all sorts of stuff. So go for it, my friend. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Craig. Uh, so orders are going to go live Friday. That's this Friday um, on mm-hmm. our Facebook group, uh, the Ghostbusters Containment Unit. You can search the Containment Unit. Uh, we collect spores, molds, and Ghostbusters autographs. Uh, we'll be taking orders through uh, the end of October, maybe the first week of November. Uh, you can pre-order photos. Uh, we're hoping to have a Afterlife trailer sometime soon, maybe, so we can get an Ernie photo. <laughs> wink, wink. Hopefully. Uh, or you can send in your own items, uh, and Ernie is, is gracious enough to, uh, to sign all those things for us. Uh, so get your orders in. Yeah, we'll, we'll post all the links in the, the descriptions for the video and the on the podcast feed. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be sending in some action figures to get signed. Uh, and I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, Ernie, we're going to have to have you back on down the road. Uh, I mentioned Jake, he's not here with us, but he's the biggest Congo fan on the planet and has a huge (laughs) Congo collection. And, uh, probably, uh, you know, you've had such a, a a cool career and you've worked with so many great actors and done so much, cool stuff and uh i think i think la's finest i finally watched the first episode really i love that it's a bad boys uh you know keeping it in the right. so- the sony franchise family I-, I love it i just I'm-, I'm happy for you i think it's awesome yeah no it's it's a great uh series and uh gabrielle union and jessica alba i mean they are so uh just so good you know and uh, yeah it's been fun i've, I've had a yeah, i love congo congo was but i've been fortunate enough to um to work on some some really things that I'm very very proud of and nothing that I'm totally embarrassed by. So it's it's really been a, a good career. Very cool. Uh, well, Tom and Matt, did you have anything else before we sign off? No, just thank you, Ernie. Thank you for uh, for signing for our group for a second time. Thank you for uh, allowing us to chat with you today. Uh, it's been great. a great experience for all of us. Well, thank you guys. It's been a, a great experience for me as well. So you guys just take care and 
keep on busting. All right. Thank you. Ernie Hudson <laughs> joining us today. Yes, have some in the containment unit. Stay tuned to uh, all of our social media for all the information you need on the signing. And like Tom said, head to the Facebook group for the Ghostbusters containment unit and take advantage of these Ernie Hudson signed items. Uh, very excited. Ernie, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Good right. talking. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.